This is a HeadGum Podcast. All right. Jake wearing the headphones. Gareth not. We're here to help. We are Jake back getting football. insecure about the headphones. <laughs> uh, Damn it. We got a great show. Oh, buddy boy. We sure do. We have a special one. This is great. I think, um, you know, we definitely sometimes when people come on the show, we don't know what to expect. And, uh, I mean, today was just a killer. Well, I knew to expect we've got the great Jonathan Scott. Yes. The future husband. Of my dear friend and co-star, Miss Zoe Dashenau. And without question, our favorite property, brother. It's not even close. We hate Drew. We're not <laughs> Drew guys. We're just not. Um, <laughs> we, but, we like Drew. But we do. But Jonathan was so, so great. And, um, well, I knew he was a man of mystery because everything he kind of does uh, in terms of his shows, you can tell he's always producing, he's always moving. I knew he's a, I know he's a magician. Mm-hmm. I know he does martial arts. He's like a black belt in taekwondo. Uh, he here, does everything. He's a he's a renaissance man. He really is, and he is uh, extremely uh, helpful yes. on the show. Yes, he and, is. Uh, but we're, we're trying something new on this one because we ended up just chatting after because I wanted to ask him a little bit about uh, Zoe, and I wanted to give him a little bit of a compliment because she's yep. an old friend. So at the end of this, stick around after both calls. We do like a little uh, fireside chat. Yeah, a little fireside chat with our man, our new best friend. Yeah, so and we, favorite property brother. Yeah, so... Uh, Follow everything Jonathan does. You obviously already do. You, everybody knows who he is. Yep. Enjoy it. GarethReynolds.com. Yeah. Starting my tour February 26th, uh, basically through April 7th, on and off. I'm going everywhere, so go there for tickets. And Lamorne Morris is looking good in that photo. Man, you must you miss him? Yeah. Yep. Uh, he texts a lot. Right. <laughs> The La Morning After Show is also a podcast, which is now our competition. Yeah, so... Um, and I know that because he sent me a photo of his show doing better than our show on Apple Podcasts, and he said, the people have spoken. Suck it. <laughs> well, fantastic. <laughs> and I told that fool, when we started, we were topping the charts, uh, and he said, take it easy. I was joking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, support that. Go watch the episodes on YouTube. Follow yes, us on YouTube's social fun. media, and well, um, especially YouTube on this one because we do have uh, some photos that you'll see why there is a visual so, moment. But that, even if you are somebody who, because I am not a YouTube watcher, for, right? So I do listen to my podcast on my phone when I'm working out. Okay. Uh, but just do us do us a favor. Check on YouTube. Fast forward to the part you want to see because Jonathan shows a photo of something that is relevant and uh, and crazy and, and totally insane and sticks with me. And without further ado, enjoy the show, everybody. Ones and twos. That's right. Hi, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Can we hi. get your name, please? My name is Julia. 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 I a. Yeah. And Julia, yeah. where are you calling from? <laughs> um, I'm calling from Oakland, California. Ooh, nice. Cool. And how old are you, Julia? I'm 29. 29. So you got a special one. You've got the great Jonathan Scott with us. A <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. A relatively <laughs> new friend who I've met through an old friend, Zoe, but a hell of a likable guy and somebody we're really happy is here. Jonathan, thanks Pleasure for joining, man. Yeah, oh, thank you, you Jonathan. Jonathan. I am willing to bring my wealth of useless information. Welcome to the well, show. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome I to think the show. It's a low bar we've set here as far as being able to help. Okay. So anything you do will be good. So Julia, the floor is yours. Yes. What's up? Um, so basically, so I'm gonna I'm planning to move in with my boyfriend later this year. Okay. And um recently I like I heard this story and it really stuck in my head. It was about like this guy who like as exercise, he walked around his house on all fours just every day, okay. like for twenty minutes. So the hemsworth. And that's not a joke. Is that Chris, right? The like, are you talking about like a weird kind of crawl on all fours because you're really using your core? You guys are looking at me yeah, like yeah. I'm crazy. Well, you know what, what I'm you're talking about? Well, because what you're saying is crazy. Crazier. Yeah. Crazier. Yeah. yeah, crazier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys are looking thing? at me like I'm crazier. <laughs> this is a thing. Yeah, Jake, it's the Hemsworth. Just imagining Jake around his house yeah. telling his wife he's Hemsworth thing. <laughs> Honey, can you get up? Yeah, I Hemsworth to the fridge. I get a bite to eat. I Hemsworth back to the couch. Yeah, I don't I, know if you eat let's pasta. Be honest, it sounds sexy. <laughs> yes. It's not. It's like belt well, sanding naked. Yeah, yeah. Not yes. sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Things are shaking. Well, but that's why you add Hemsworth. Because right. if you said the Johnson, 
You go, By the what? way, just He just yeah. goes on all fours throughout his house. And he does the Sloppy Johnson. <laughs> you heard about the Sloppy Johnson? By That's where way. he eats pasta while bear crawling in his house. <laughs> Fucking boner time. <laughs> no, for you? I, for, I, Julia. Not for us. We are in the presence of a lady here. <laughs> yes, agree. and the caller. Yes. Yeah. So, Julia, you heard a story about a guy who goes on all fours to exercise. Well, yeah, and so, but so I was like, wouldn't it be wild if you were like moving in with somebody and you found out they had like that weird, like this weird thing that they do every day, yeah. and and so then I realized that I'm about to move in with somebody and I have the opportunity to um, give him this wonderful oh. experience, but I don't want to walk around on all fours. That's right. the thing. It, it's like that doesn't seem oh, right to call. me. He would never believe that that was like something that I just usually did, you know. So I was trying to think of something else. So basically, the the idea here is, Julia, you could freak out the significant other you're moving in with by creating something that he doesn't know yet you could play a good little prank first That's of all it. you're my yeah. hero yes yeah. we're all proud this of you. is amazing <laughs> we're call. all proud of you what call. about what about something less exercise and more you have a fake doll that lives with you oh, this is I've, great. I've actually met somebody who had a fake baby that they would take around in a car, in a, like a pram. Oh, and this they is would, good and that's scary. Great. What about, but it could be like a grown up one and you could say it's my roommate and you treat it like it's totally real. You could even call it Jake. Yeah, interesting. It, it, let's let's be honest, it's a great first pitch. It really is. <laughs> because I, I mean, even in my like limited experience going through like a toy store, they do have those kind of bigger like, like you've never had a sex doll. My God. <laughs> Don't right, let's even call it what it is. And do you pull see? That shit over but if you put a... it in a pram, it's adorable. You Jonathan, put it do you over... see the spin this guy does? Yeah. It's like a so big nice thing nice. in a maid's outfit that <laughs> one can be on top of. You can power yeah. wash it. It's the usual. It's fine. But really It's got to be dishwasher safe. So, Julia, here's where we've started. This idea uh -huh. that there is a version of a doll that you have and love. Uh, uh, Jonathan said the idea of uh, Jake, he had told a story about early on about uh, when he was first birthed, his brother had uh, been sitting on his head and smushed his skull. Mm -hmm. So when he came out, he had a mushed head. <laughs> you could create the idea of like the you twin doll that you've always had. With like a really <laughs> scary smushed head uh. so that, you know, because if you want this to be believable, if you go far, he's going to know it's a bit. But what we want is him uh -huh. to believe yeah. that this is now part of his life. Yeah. I, I have ahead. more backstory. Jump in, jump, jump I have in, great jump. backstory. Jump, let's go. It turns out you had a twin yes. in your shoulder. Oh, no. One and of these. One of those. And Can don't join. worry. The teeth are still there inside, right. but the rest of it <laughs> absorbed into your body. And so you grew up with this doll that is representative of your twin this is phenomenal and um that just gives you a little bit more backstory to make it believe All right, before we go on this road because this could be interested julia if we're gonna pitch on yeah. this i need to know is there a chance you what's the what's your uh, boyfriend's name or what should we call him if you want me to give you a fake name or sure, really? whatever you it's up to you oh, uh <laughs> let's call him charlie. charlie charlie okay so is there a chance that charlie could believe uh -huh that you had a twin, a shoulder twin, which I guess would be a I, version know, of conjoined. How long have you been together? <laughs> um, a little over a year. I feel like I would have mentioned that. Okay. I don't I, know. I, I feel like a year you could still get away with shoulder twin. But I, I feel don't, like 18 <laughs> months were past it. But I don't want to go down a road okay, that right. she then says at the end. Okay. I'm not, so. Okay. Have you, have you ever had a shoulder pimple that could pass for teeth <laughs> under yeah. the skin? Yeah. Again, these are good God. questions. No, yeah. <laughs> no. I want to tease you, my man, but you're coming out on fire. I know. It, it's really it's, 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 fucking it's, a, it's man. It's hard to pour water on this. I mean, I keep wanting to say this is getting too crazy. Go away from shoulder twin. Do you have a weird pimple on your shoulder that could be the spot of the shoulder twin, Julia? <laughs> um, and my only thought too is like, if it's a big doll, like he has been to my apartment Agreed. before. Agreed. You know, okay. I mean, he well, would have seen something like that, but but I mean, I, if it was something. Small. What, but does I he also, go through every drawer and every that that's another red flag right there i Is also he think everywhere? you have the freedom to say you had some stuff in storage and now that you're moving in with each other you brought a couple things out of storage i think you're weird now doll. that i have like a bigger space but okay yeah. so yeah so but we got so we've got weird doll we can go back and keep mm -hmm. pitching on that i'm sensing a little hesitation she's pushing yeah. back let's go to a second pitch so let's okay. go to a second pitch all right 
Gareth, you got anything? You got something? Well, so you were talking about weird exercises. So I will say when you move in with somebody for the first time, there is a lot that does get discovered. There is a newness to it. Yep. So (laughs) we do have the crawling on all fours when you're entering that world. Maybe we create a morning routine for you that you might only pull off for a day or two before you break, Yes, but is shocking <laughs> yeah. and disgusting uh-huh. and is, just makes him do, go ahead. Jonathan. Is the coffee enema at the beginning of the routine or the now end of talking. the routine? That's well, exactly right. Technically that, the end. That yeah. you have I things say, that yeah. you do that early in the morning or- Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. Are you willing to put Java in your anus? Will you? The amount of times no. I've heard that in this business, okay. man, yeah. that takes yeah. me back to when I first moved here. <laughs> That's how you got that new was, girls. Yeah. <laughs> Liz Merriweather's well, first thing. Yeah, like, uh, can you say any lines? No. Are you willing to put Java in your anus? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Do I sign the contract? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I... when you test for a pilot, yeah, you sign yeah, for yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so what do you think about if we created a weird morning routine? We need more from you, Julia. What do you want this thing to be? Give us some rules. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I think like routine, you know, because I was trying to think about things and, and like a, a doll is a good idea. I mean, I think it would work if it were like, you know, if it were something that, you know, reasonably I maybe could have had the whole time. Like so let's, something right, called, let's like, pitch a little, on like, small doll. Troll doll or something. Troll doll's great. Okay. <laughs> the, the more, the more creepy lifelike, the better. Yes. Yeah, you could, mm-hmm. you could have, you could just, if you wanted to do like troll dolls, you could get like eight of them. Oh, or, or, <laughs> you know what we could do? Here's a weird play. We create this idea that you have this twin doll. You've had it since you were a kid. It has a smashed head. It could be called Jake. You know, to connect both of the ideas. (laughs) You do not mention it to him. But in his area that like, you know, when you move in, there's going to be a part of the closet that's his. You Mm -hmm. clear stuff out. You wait until he goes, what's this? And you, without (laughs) breaking, go like, Jake. And she goes, what is it? And you go, oh, I've never... That's like very significant for me. That is good. And he goes, he'll laugh or feel uncomfortable and you need to play dead serious. This is my twin doll. I've had it since I was a baby. I love it. Oh, here's what we could do. We make it disgusting and you say, this will be given to my first child. Oh, yeah. This will be passed (laughs) on because it means a lot and it was given to me by my parents. And yeah. we create like a disc and it like make it smell weird. You rub can it run in it over with a car, put it in some mud. Yeah, a little mustard what in do the you, hair. What do you think of something like this, Julia? Is this something you could commit to? Yes, actually. I mean, it's kind of, I, I do have sort of like weird collections of toys. Okay. That's my race. That one would have been like. I like that backstory. That is, do you like the backstory of the twin? Yeah. Okay, well, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I what? think if you can pull it off with serious face, yes, you'll it'll go a long way. But what is something if we do <laughs> if we do the twin? What is something about you and your life, Julia, that we could connect this doll to? That's going to make Jonathan's Charlie... doll shopping. By the way, I, no, for... I have a doll. What color hair do you have, by the way? It's like light brown. I literally have the doll. It was on an ep- <laughs> it was on an episode of Property Brothers, and I came across it. And it was under the bed, and I pulled it out. And I'm like, it's a life size, uh, creepy as fuck doll. And I pulled it out, and that it was exactly what we're no talking about. This way. woman said she's had it was her best it, friend as a kid. <laughs> she's had it her whole life. I I literally have a picture here somewhere of it, and which is not very effective in a podcast. But no, fine. Uh, who cares? if we get I, it, who cares? I, I, I have. Something. And you say life size? What are we talking here? We're when talking... I lifted it, it had it was like. Five feet tall. Okay, like, so Julia, you, just to be clear then, if there's a yeah. world where, and Jonathan, do you have that doll? Do you have access to it or no? I don't have the doll. Okay, I have, we have an image. The, the photograph, but I sh- I'm sure it exists. Do you want, are you yeah. thinking something five feet tall or you think it's something small? Um, I mean, I'm about to move to San Francisco, so I'm probably going to have a pretty small apartment. Okay. Five feet might be a little. So if we, when, when he <laughs> finds really. this photo, we're going to pull it up as a reference for you. I think, but, yeah. I think either way, uh-huh. it's a parting But gift. when you think of, uh, when we were pitching the twin thing, one of the things that could really spook Charlie out is if whatever the backstory is truly connects yeah. to your life yeah. in ways that uh-huh. it's, it's almost too real that he's not allowed to laugh. Oh, uh, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I, I cannot. Wait, hold on. Gareth is looking at the photo of the doll. Okay, so. We'll the... send you a photo after, Julia. <laughs> I, I don't really know how to describe the doll other than the fingers are disproportionate to the rest, which is not good. The doll is haunting. 
Uh, the doll has a bit of a red face. It has sort of Julia Louis Dreyfus hair. Cute. It looks like a <laughs> small um, witchy Julia Louis Dreyfus. <laughs> with again, the fingers are are shockingly it, long. Also, a shocking expression. Uh, <laughs> a sho- a sh- just a very off putting, but. I will say, with oh the backstory God. that we're talking about, Jake's having a look. With the backstory that we're talking Kevin, about, one? is particularly, it kind of would line up so well. Um, oh, so this is shocking. It, and this is really good. I'm, I'm glad you showed this. Your reaction, the way you said that you just played nonchalant, like, oh, how do you not know about. Yes. You know. But so here's, well, but here's oh, the did other. Did I never tell you this? Yeah, exactly. But Julia, here's the other catch with this doll that I like. And this is a different direction that I was pitching. <laughs> I was pitching like scary doll from like the movie Annabelle. It What's is. great about this is that's a little person. Yeah, and the hands and are so problematic. Yeah, like, but that's close enough. The fingers are so problematic. <laughs> like, even whoever designed this like had some idea, but somebody was, must have been like, the, "Why is stuff. each finger a hot dog?" I, I'm not gonna lie. The husband in this in this episode that we did, he hated. The doll, and yeah. she would not get rid of it. It's he pretty good. Hated it. Oh my lord! I really think. I mean, again, I, yes. I, I think we. I if I were you, and you want to go absolutely fucking crazy, a doll like what Jonathan just showed is really so amazing. That, I, I will buy the doll for you. Okay, so what I will buy the doll and send you the doll. Out of the, the doll. property brother's budget, <laughs> you get the weird no, Julia so, Witch Dreyfus. Julia, I have a pitch for you based on what we just saw, yeah. and it might change yeah, it a yeah, little yeah. bit, and it's going to make you a fucking weirdo to him, which is the point. Yes. So what really <laughs> scares me about that doll, like if, if I went to a woman's house and that oh, was yeah. under the bed, yeah. and that would scare me, honest yes. to God, to my bones. Absolutely. That would like really <laughs> fuck with me. Yes. If I moved in with a woman after a year and I saw that fucking weird doll, I would go on a tailspin. So here's what I'm pitching. We okay. figure out a way to get you a doll that looks just like you and is very realistic, and you have like a little you doll. But it seems as uh-huh. real as that. So it's not like a fucking weird. It, and I, I think maybe we go bigger than a little. Like if it could be the size that that I'm, doll was, and production, if we can find it, we'll send it to you. Yes. But if okay. if we can put <laughs> under your bed a four foot doll that weighs like 65 yeah, here, here's what Here's what that, I would do that too. That shit is really it's, scary. It's awful looking. It is, it's awful. It's like if you saw a smell, it's But bad. I also want him the first time he looks under your bed to scream because yes. he thinks it's a person. Well, well, what I would do too is- I like that moment. I would parse out, I would part, if you're going to do it, I think, which is, you should. I was your friend. Yeah. I'm advising yeah. you strongly to, thank yeah. you so much. I'm sorry I misspoke. <laughs> Legally when, um, I would parse it out. So I would, uh-huh. you know, maybe two weeks before the move, I would explain this like it's a bit of a difficult secret for you. Just ah. get the fact that this twin existed in your world. Explain how you do that. What do so you, you just go, look, there is something like- Jonathan, I, will you be Charlie? Do you mind? All right, I'll be Charlie. Um, What's you, up, babe? Do you mind if I do a, a affectation Please. of Please. <clears throat> should, hey. we, should we be more affectionate if we're- I mean, we're well, look, we're about we're to move hands. in together. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so- right. um, <sighs> this isn't even a big deal, but um, there what is, is anything. I know. I just because we're getting serious and we're about to move in together, um, I did just want to tell you that I did have a strange thing happen before I was born. Um, I had a twin, and mm-hmm. the reason why you've never heard about her is because she she didn't make it. Um, she was partially on me, uh, attached to me, and um. I, I, this what crazy is this like conjoined? Yeah, and it was like a head, and they're not sure what happened if it just fell off, or if I ate it in the womb. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that because it really means a lot to me, and I just, you know, I love you, and I haven't told you that yet, so that's just something. Well, should we have post traumatic revelation sex now? Absolutely. That's where kiss, I was going. Please kiss. Right. The, right. 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 <laughs> the neighbor is really okay. weird. I'm gonna. Can yeah. I give my third yes. party? Unbiased opinion yes. of the acting. Uh, it was <laughs> no, total. It was it, it was totally <laughs> middle of the road. Where it needed yeah. to be. It where it right. needed to be. Yeah, I was well, understanding. I <laughs> prefer Jake's proposal, where she doesn't even you. say anything, okay. and then pretends yeah. that it's but I like because mean it. yeah, yeah. we heard yeah, it. Okay. I wanted to hear the setup. All right, yeah. Okay. But I like that it's just there. Yeah. I like. Okay. I actually like that we go. I think we go size. 
I think we have to do Jonathan's size of a doll. And I think we put it under the bed and let him find it so that it's horror. And then you double (laughs) down and say like, oh, this? Why would I even bring it up? I've had this forever. I've got a (laughs) follow-up. I love that. Yeah. Okay. What if we do this? If we really want to play the long con a little bit more, yes. why don't you, if he freaks out, which he will, he will. if he's a human man, uh, <laughs> why don't we then, you suggest calling into our show to see who's Ooh. right, and we do a follow-up call where Jake and I will totally take your side to fulfill the prank on him fully. That could oh be God. a fun second half. So, Julia, <laughs> where yes. are you at with this? So, well, so far we've given you the idea of creating, Jonathan came out hot with an idea. Hot of pitching a doll, we could go small, we could go kind of smashed head. And then we've kind of leaned <laughs> into this idea that we went down the road of it could be a conjoined twin that used to live off your shoulder, yeah. shoulder that maybe you ate, probably. Uh, maybe pitch it beforehand. And then we've kind of ended with the idea of spending a little bit of money that's worth it for the bit. If we could also find something, we would send it to you. We'll help. Uh, if we can find it. Yeah. But the idea of getting a pretty good sized doll yeah. that looks pretty realistic just put it under yeah. your bed. Let him find it. Mm-hmm. So then, Julia, here's okay. what we need you to do to make yeah. this real. Uh-huh. You do research and find the doll and then uh-huh. uh, email Kevin. Okay. And, and I'll tell you, if you want an option, we have it. I mean, what we saw on Jonathan's phone was shocking. Yes. <laughs> well, we don't have it. <laughs> I know. We don't have it. to some random phone. lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, we could do an episode with every picture on my phone because <laughs> there's so much weird shit on my phone. <laughs> It uh, is. This Julia, phone can never get stolen. Uh, thank you for the call. <laughs> All right. All right thanks. Good luck. I feel for Charlie. <laughs> All right. Bye. We are into the ads. Hey, Garfman. official. Official. Back with Rocket Money. Blasting off into the ads. That's exactly right. Um, so, Jake, you know what? I, you, I mean, we've used this. We yeah, like Rocket, Rocket Money. Money. Yeah. Uh, personal finance app. Yep. Finds and cancels your unwanted subscription. I, for instance, recently uh, had to cancel Packers Radio from about four years ago. I realized true? I was still paying for it because one time I was driving to a show and I had to listen to a playoff game. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, these people have been getting two ninety nine for four years. By the way, I like the idea of Rocket Money because uh, I've canceled most of my streamers, and that's not a joke. It does motivate. It does. But, but you I, get there's to see it. a lot of big streamers yes. and big shows yes. that I've never watched, and yes. I'm in the business because I don't have it. And I would rather save the seven dollars and ninety nine cents than pay these snakes all that money and not watch it. That's what Rocket, Rocket Money's money. doing for Jake. So it monitors your spending, it helps lowers your bills, has over five million users, and has helped save members an average of seven hundred twenty dollars a year with over five hundred million in canceled subscriptions. Which is good. Yes, it's good. So it's it's super helpful. You will be surprised at what you find lurking in your subscriptions. So like we always like to say, uh, we're here to help stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com Give us Gil- Can Gilly come in and do the ending? You could put him on break. I know, but can we pull him back in? Hold on a second. I was just parking. You stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash help. That's rocketmoney.com slash help. Rocketmoney.com slash help. I'm going to the bar. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, Jake. Big fan. I don't know what you... Do you know everything there is to know about Squarespace? I know that my wife used it to create a website, and yes. it was very easy to do, and I we have not tech people. My, all my websites are through Squarespace. I'm getting emotional. Are through Squarespace. <laughs> is this true? Yeah, yeah. It's a little choked up. Uh, it is. It's just yeah, the yeah, easiest easy. to use. Um, I've used Squarespace the whole time I've had websites. I... I use Squarespace. How about this as a slogan? Squarespace, not for brainiacs. That's pretty good. I mean, I don't. I, they, I don't know if they're. They gonna, might be yeah, like, yeah. well, we'll try to get pass, everybody. Pass. You know, but but either Squarespace, way, Squarespace maybe for brainiacs. User friendly, not user, user, user enemy. Maybe. maybe I don't know. We'll pitch to them. Yeah. Um, okay, so some of the things you can do now with Squarespace that are that interests us: Fluid yeah. Engine. With Fluid Engine, it's a next generation website design system from Squarespace. Obviously, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity, hmm. which I know appeals to you, to finally unlock your I'll tell you what I, I like about Squarespace, potential. and I'm going to keep it simple. That's right. Making websites easy. And custom merch, Jake. Easily sell custom merch and create a passive yeah, like income this. stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. Also, the online store. Sell your products on an online store. Listen. Hold on one second. Hey, Gilly! 
Get your ass out of the bar and get in here. Hold on a second. Now. Uh, we're, as we're if two gin giblets. Hey, buddy, we're giblets? doing square space. Is it a gimlet or a giblet? We are doing square What's space. What's the difference between a giver and a giblet? A giver and I'm a... I'm going to gimlet. I'm having a gin giblet. Are you right, a square space. Are you ready to do this? Let's go. go. The closer brings in. I've got three pitches left, and they're all strikes. I've had a couple. I've been on the booze a little bit today. Yeah, and www.squarespace.com. Hey, Gil. Yeah. The first pitch was not a strike. Let's hey, yeah, that's all right. Ball it's a ball. One. You got to get a couple more chances. <clears throat> Head to www.squarespace.com slash Gil sent me to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain using code Gil sent me. That's www.squarespace.com slash Gil sent me. Back to the bar. Hello. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Can we get your first name, please? Uh, I am Emily. Emily. Uh, where are you calling from, Emily? I'm calling from like... Central New York area. Sure. Central New York area. Very yep. mysterious. Very yeah, general. cool. I yeah. like that. Uh, and what's your sign? I'm a Capricorn. Okay. Mm, interesting. Favorite, favorite snack food real quick? I thought quick. you were going to say yield for a second. <laughs> 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 I like a no part. I like a street cleaning. Uh, and Emily, you got a special one today. You've got obviously me and uh, Garf, and then you've got Mr. Jonathan. So this will be who the hell is that? Uh, she's she's like, like okay, she knows who it is. The man who created Property Brothers and pulls his dead weight brother along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, Drew. For no reason, we're coming after you, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Sit you on like, my head. Yeah, you're never gonna time. live it. You sit on our guy's head, then we yeah, sit on your <laughs> head. For your head, Drew. <laughs> So all of a sudden we have an enemy of a show for all no right. reason. All right, and it's really weird. <laughs> and it's a very likable guy. I support this. <laughs> Not a lot of people have civil ward the property brothers, yeah, but we'll exactly do it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So Emily, thank you for the show. Drew, if you're watching, turn it off. Come on, turn Drew. Turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. You We're coming of for you. Pitch. So Emily, what is the uh, what is the problem? What can we help you with? All right. Um, <laughs> so I am excited about you, Drew. By the way. <laughs> Well, Did you uh, just no. call me? Well, no, Emily, 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 you blew Emily, it. I'm out. I'm Emily, out. Emily, oh, no, Jonathan. Oh, no, Jonathan. Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. 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 Emily. Emily. Drew's the enemy. Here's, we're here to Jonathan's help. Jonathan's the First of all, we're here to help oh. you. You can't call a twin oh. by oh the Oh, my rock. God. Jesus Christ. We've got Jonathan. We hate Drew. I liked you so much. Yes. Uh, Same. Now, we hate Drew. We hate Drew. Would, <laughs> there we go. So, Emily. No, you, know, you need to promise after this call, you you call five people and get them hating yes. Drew. Too. Yeah. It's like the ring. I will. And now, Emily, now because of your big blunder, you have to sing a quick song about your love Sorry, for Jonathan you know the rules. and your hatred for Drew. All right. And three, two, one. Go, Emily. I love you so much. And I hate that true guy so much more. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, Jonathan, I'm, are you? Is she forgiven? You know what? We're back where we uh, were. Okay, Emily. Work, what Emily. what yeah. is the problem? Woo, that was she close. saved. You saved it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> if it happens um, okay. again, I can. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's She's not gonna call. say a name for the rest of the call. There's no way. Yeah. All I'm, right. What's I'm, going I'm on? Absolutely will not. Okay. Um. So my husband is going through a midlife crisis, as we are calling it. Um. And like your classic midlife crisis, uh, he wanted to make an absurdly expensive, completely unnecessary purchase. Mm. Um, and I eventually caved, let him buy it, but with the condition that I can get or do something similarly absurd for myself. Respect. And I really need help figuring out what I want. Okay, respect. Um, Everyone is thinking the same thing as me right now. Yep. What respect was the purchase? <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You really teased us. Uh, so um, he bought a kit to build a barn, so he can build a barn right next to the freaking house. I don't know if that's stupid. So he's going so through an Amish my... life crisis. <laughs> oh, hold on, what's <laughs> darling? We'll be erecting a barnyard. Emily, what's his name? Eb Ezekiel. What's his name? <laughs> no, Adam. 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 Okay. Great. Adam so wants Adam, to build. But hold on. What a really build. A, build Building a backyard little cabin it's or a great. barn. It's, it's adding square it, footage, usable, functional square footage. Is that midlife crisis? Well, it's just very funny. It's very funny to picture like a Corvette 
Yeah. What's he? What he wants a three? He like I he thought. wants to make a barn. Gonna, I thought it was going to be like a Miata and an earring. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've had the great Jonathan to... Scott in my backyard looking at my midlife yeah. crisis builds. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I built a little cabin. Then you were in uh, the area. You came and looked at like the little like porch area. You, did, you were doing great. You Thanks, you had a, your eye on the prize. It was good. Thanks, buddy. But what's the, what's your concern with this? Yes. Why is this a midlife crisis? Is this not something that would add? useful space to the whole family oh because he wants to fuck his new girlfriend in the barn well the barn <laughs> because the barn is a part of america uh, and, and so yeah. the barn becomes his own country yeah, under, so either the He's barn seceding. has its own laws yes. or the barn is like a 60s yeah. shack room yeah. or just he and a bunch of different he's, he's in austin powers outfits in there <laughs> you're like yeah baby so is part of the barn <laughs> what is jonathan's right what's so bad about the barn emily yeah, emily you're no. up against three barn fans <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't uh, Oh. Fucked no. up, Emily. By the I thought, way, I you just you nailed us in the worst way. We're all barn fans. <laughs> Gross. We're barn men. We just became We're the, the barn le- boys. We just became the least fuckable the three guys boys. on the planet. <laughs> the barn boys don't need to fuck. We got each other. If she called in, and, <laughs> we can if, build fencing. If Adam called in and said, "I'm thinking of building a barn," but if we would all go, do it, do it, yeah. do it. Like, Kevin, why is this <laughs> even a call? We just <laughs> want to take this guy out for sandwiches. <laughs> Can we help? Yeah. Is, a, ju, a, real quick, Emily, is Adam there? Can we talk? To, he sounds awesome. He's not here for a good reason, and it's for the barn. Um, oh, my God. So okay. This is like, this is, oh, we're talking about a whole ass, like, 30 foot by 60 foot pole barn. Oh, wow. Like, nice. okay, huge, that's huge. 25 foot, like, it's humongous. Go ahead. Does he know what he's doing? No. No, we he just got a kid. We don't build barns. Right. Okay. Is he getting a permit? Yes. Yeah, so he's he's got okay. that he's stuff figured that. out. And, and how big is your lot? Um, we have questions. eighty acres, and he oh, wants we to have eighty acres. We have eighty acres. He, he wants, wants to put, to put it right next to the house. What? So why is he so dead set on it being right next to the house? Because heat and electricity. Okay, ah. so it makes sense. Okay, well, listen, <laughs> we're not here to cheerlead the barn. But hold on, but we need to. But hold on, Emily. Because before we get to yours, and we w- we are on your team, yes. just so you know, we're going to pitch My some pitch stupid for shit for you. My pitch for is also a barn. You build a <laughs> yeah. barn next to his barn. Yeah. You build a bigger barn? You build a bigger barn. One foot bigger in every area. <laughs> He's 60, you go 61. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you classify yourself as an anti-barnite? Mm-hmm. Are you a barn burner? No. We are in the country. There are lots of barns around. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why we have to build our own barn right. when you could like... Go to the neighbor barn. Have you I ever don't... seen Field of Dreams? I think he's having a Field of Dreams, but with a barn. If you build it, they will come. Yeah, but again, that's with the what shag I'm worried shag. about. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, this barn. If you build it, they will come. Is the grossest way to think. I'm not a barn uh, guy anymore. I don't want a bunch of. I've never been in, more in. I don't want people in mid New York all coming and like coming yeah. in the barn. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, it's because it's hard to get out of the straw. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Guys, stick to the tarps. Here's my question is, I don't understand. I agree with you. I don't understand why it has to be right next to the house because <clears throat> if it's just a matter of power, you can just buy a longer cable to run power to the barn in its new location. So is there a flat area that's maybe right a couple away. hundred yards away from the house? We have so Yes, there's plenty. Plenty to choose from. Okay. Has he started building? He's well. He's he took down trees by the house. Yeah. So I'm starting to get more on Emily's team here. It's not mm-hmm. just the barn. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's like you don't have to be so close. Is he doing a zip line from the upper story oh, window to the that's barn? That's a good pitch for yours. I'm back with no. Adam now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a we, zip we line have, guy. All right, hon. I'm going to go to the zip barn. Zip we have a zip Wait, line. go ahead, Emily. We have, you a, do zip have a zip line, line? and like this oh, barn cool. is. Can for... I get your address? <laughs> This barn is for like not for equipment or animals. It's for like circus stuff. Okay, Wait, hold on. You What's gotta up? lead out with that, Emily. What does that mean? <laughs> What's that? Trapezing and stuff. So he, so right now he is traveling like five hours away to pick up a an Olympic trampoline. We already have an okay, Olympic you... trampoline. <laughs> okay. And, all this is going in Wait, the barn. You, Emily, you do I realize you buried the lead. Yeah? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The midlife yeah. crisis is He's becoming is a not, carny. Hold on. The midlife crisis is not that he's building a barn. Yes. It's that he's building a circus. It's that he's becoming a clown. 
Yeah. Okay, I have a, I have another revelation. I'm a former professional clown. Jesus you are Christ. Right. Yeah. I was a clown for years and years. I also trapeze. Oh my uh, God. And so all of these You're sorts of things. You're also a martial artist. I, I'm a, and a magician. And a magician. Yeah. What is going so, on? Um, is he hiring for the circus? <laughs> does Wait, he need a barnmate? What, what, does, Jonathan, what does your husband Jonathan, do where professionally? Is where is Drew? I want to talk. <laughs> oh, like, what does low, your low. husband do? Um, I mean, we're both scientists, but he is okay. he's like uh, also a pole vault coach. He was an all American athlete. He's and his okay. father's into circus. Like this is not totally weird. Okay, so just so I need to just get clean on something. So he's building a circus next to your house with a big trampoline. What else is he putting in his fun circus? So and why is it a tent? And why? Yeah. <laughs> why is yeah. it a tent? Yeah, why yeah, do he's we not need moving city to city. <laughs> yeah, but hold. I just need a little bit, just because I really do think you buried the lead on this circus stuff. A barn <laughs> when you live on eighty acres makes sense to me. Yeah, I imagine some tools and maybe some animals. That's what I imagine. I'm getting an really, actual barn. I'm getting really thrown by the circus. Yeah, stuff. no, when he's unicycling around on his own, that's so where it gets. What creepy. else does he have in there? He's got a trampoline. What else does he have? Um. So there's like ropes and silks like he has this idea that we're going to be doing a what? lot of aerial acrobatic type things where um, did this come from <laughs> awesome i think again from his mother and father who are more sor- circus oriented <laughs> interesting and, so his midlife crisis is tapping into this childhood thing that his family did yeah circus yeah. meant a lot yeah it's, this was yeah. cool and he's like you know, they say uh, before people die, they move back to the type of environment that they grew up in. So oh if you grew God. up in like cold weather, yeah, right. All of a sudden, you're like living in Florida, like a guy like me, <laughs> and like at eighty, I'm gonna be like, maybe I'm gonna go to Chicago, yeah, because you want to like die happen. where you yeah. started. Yeah, right. Don't worry, your husband's not dying. <laughs> it's fine. But <laughs> midlife crisis is the start. It yeah. is the start, Jonathan. <laughs> have you thought of any of the things you want to do? Like, have you thought? Have you thought on any worlds that you're like interested in, kind of going? into for your barn that's where i'm really stuck because i okay. okay i'm like so you... generally pretty content and did not i don't need a barn like <laughs> i'm not going understand, but how about crisis. this i get it i mean you're not having a crisis but what are certain things like if you know what are certain things that make you really happy if you have a free saturday and no one's around yeah what do you like to do that's, again, that's really hard. Like I'm still, I'm in that like mother of young kids constantly sure. like cleaning the house and taking care of the kids. Um, I get it. So I don't really have moments. How about this? While you're working with the kids and everything's tired, you're working, you can't sleep. You do have a fantasy, right? What is something you would like to do? Tear his barn down. So I've been learning, I've been teaching myself French um, with the idea <laughs> of like, okay. like going and being able to actually speak French. Okay, I got a pitch. I got I got 30 pitches, but go ahead. <laughs> First pitch. I'm, none of them are good. I should point that out right away. First pitch. You build a French bistro. <laughs> I was thinking bistro in my head. And it is, you get the tables, you get the chairs. Yours is outside that connects to the barn, and it is a French circus. So all <laughs> the, if he ever wants to put a sign like your last name circus, it has to be in French. The aesthetic Everything has to go French. And if he's like, I'm not loving this, you go, that's how I feel about the barn. Right? <laughs> because what you might be wanting to play is a little spite bit. Spite Paris. A little spite Paris. Uh, but we could start building something in that world that you're doubling down on this French thing where he goes like, why is everything in our kitchen in French? And you go, I'm learning the language. And he goes, I know, I get it, but it's a lot. And you go, kind of how I feel about a fucking trapeze act in our backyard. <laughs> Jonathan, what do you got on that phone really fast? Uh, spite in French is dépit. <laughs> dépit. <laughs> All right, Gareth. Barn de dépit. Gareth, let's hear some pictures. What do you well, got? Well, I guess, okay, so he has his barn. How many kids do you have? Two. In order for him to have his barn, you could say that for one night a week, he's got to go out there with the kids and you get a night off because Ooh. he gets to go do sort of the little circus act yeah, like with that. the kids this is actually a gives you idea. a free night because you know and you could take up a hobby you could keep learning yes. your french you could do something like that <laughs> yeah so he kind of like the whole idea of the barn is that the kids like my daughter already knows how to do rope and some silk type stuff like 
he wants to encourage it more that, with them. So Jonathan, I don't this think is that information that we really should have known. Yeah, so this is all okay. kind of nice stuff. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm getting out of this one, Emily? You're a selfish asshole. <laughs> uh, no, just so you know, not... he, he was making eye contact with me when he said it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seemed uh, like it was to you. So it not... wasn't me. It I, wasn't me. I, I will point out, kids do love the aerial stuff and the silk. It is a lot of fun to do those sorts of activities. Uh, it, after analyzing all of this, yeah. it sounds like, actually, the one other question I have first. How big was the financial impact of this thing that he bought? Oh, is my it God. Un, totally yeah. irresponsible, or yes. is it like, no, that's actually, okay, that's, that's actually what's most out of character. That's what shows it's a crisis is like, you yes. like, what did you just, what? <laughs> but her, but your question today, Emily, was not, what do we do about my husband overspending yeah. on building oh, no. a circus? Barnaholic. By the no. way, that new no. mo a Matt no. Damon movie. <laughs> yeah. He did one building a zoo. Yeah. Build a yeah. yeah. Now, but your question was, what do we do for your, your midlife crisis, right? Yeah, for me. So I just, so for you, so. I think we're going to end this pretty soon because here's why. What we have learned is your husband did a really weird thing, but <laughs> it does, he is incorporating the kids. What we've also learned about you is you're not sure what you want to do. And I think your midlife crisis is time to find what makes you happy apart from your job, apart from your kids, and apart from the weird fucking circus, which you're not interested in. <laughs> so there are two days a week that he's with the kids. Emily. You got to get your groove back. I, <laughs> you got to find what makes you, you this is city slickers and you got to go get your smile back. Yeah. <laughs> I also think what you could do is you could pitch. I mean, because this is quite an undertaking to have a circus barn. You could pitch that you get a trip to France, maybe in a year. That's what you do. You take a solo trip. You oh. use your French out there. You get 10 days around a beautiful country. Yeah. There's a lot of unrest, but you could pitch something like that. Um, also. Here's another option. You could just, I mean, I don't know what we're talking about, how much he's spending. Cut that in half and you can just gamble with it. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, you sell the tickets to the circus and you get to keep the money. Ooh, sell tickets. Oh, you know, that's the, the, pretty good. The too. one thing I will say is, I don't think you making another irresponsibly expensive is the move. Is the move because then it puts you doubly in yeah. right. a financial s hardship. So, you know, there are positives, it sounds like, with this building. I'm going to stop calling it a barn because it sounds like it's maybe just an, un an unattractive <laughs> I, building. I, I think know. you're building it's shaming. A it's a box. It's, uh, yeah. it's a box. But, you know, make make the most. It sounds like it's happening. Yes, okay, it is happening. But I agree. I think if you could find a little bit of your joy back again. And, and you know, we've got two kids. And I believe me, I know how much time that takes. It is so important for you to find something that makes you happy and you, and as a family you need to make time for that that's yes, important i think that's so no. here's what we're gonna end this one on emily because i think jonathan's right there you could either lean into what he's doing but he takes the kid he teaches them this stuff and you find your kind of hobby yeah. what you like you could take yourself on a solo trip to france you could build a bistro which sounds like you're not going to do you could <laughs> gamble um, the, you just you take gamble, half of what this barn costs, and, just and you, yeah, you just find a. We've, you could, and it's a. We didn't go deep on this one, but there might be something here. Uh, and then, if I had more coffee, I would have pitched harder on this one. But that is, you could sell tickets to the circus and create a weird side business. I mean, that is. <laughs> you're, you're talking about getting her further incorporated yes. into the. <laughs> so, Emily, what do you think you're gonna actually do in this truly unique setup of a call? <laughs> So I really, honestly, I like the idea of like, he goes with the kids, he takes the kids into the barn one night a week and yes. I find my own personal happiness again. Yeah, um, this is and great. also maybe, I maybe I'll Sweet. just go to France anyway. Like, <laughs> add that both. And yeah, also, he's building a barn. while you're finding your happiness, it might be, you've seemed like a highly educated, smart human being. So you're probably going to learn the language pretty fast. Yeah. And may I recommend Babel? Babel. <laughs> With Babel, all things are possible in linguistics. Yeah. You but can start making pizzas like... or you could watch, you could make a list of movies you've always wanted to see. Not or you could get into specialty cocktails. What better thing for him to come back to the barn and you're shit faced? Uh, so, Emily, we appreciate the call. I think this is going to end up being a happy one for you. And really weird stuff. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Super weird. <laughs> really wild. 
spending money Wild, you guys don't have to dangerous build dangerous barn circus. swings yeah. that we're all in support of pretty much yeah. until we yeah. learned about the clowning. I've also learned in a real like you were also a professional clown. Uh, yeah, that, that's got kind of away. We just got the alarm. That's we the are honor. on here. Emily, thank here. you for the Good luck out there. <laughs> Today's episode is also brought to you by Babbel. Babbel. The uh, app that has helped me learn Espanol. Yeah. Well, that's coming across right now. That's what you were saying. So your Spanish, you how do you feel good about your Spanish? Gof bueno. Uh, Goffman, I'm muy bueno. I am able to go to other countries and speak the language I am learning. Yo tengo mucho hambre. Necesito usar el baño. Uh huh. Absolutely, Kevin. Um, point him in the right direction of whatever he's asking for. <laughs> I'm um, hungry and I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> what a combination of things to have to tell in that order. Yes, I'm very hungry and I gotta use the bathroom muy rápido. <laughs> okay. So listen, uh, with Babel you can be a better you in 2024. Unless you're Jake, who sounds like he's probably the ugly American <laughs> country. Uh, the Necesito más cerveza. It's the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors. Also. I mean, do you really want a tutor hanging around? No. I feel like that after seeing age, Parasite, yeah. I think it opens a can of worms. Yeah. Uh, so don't hire a private tutor or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Get Babbel. That's what we're saying. Yeah, also, everyone's doing everything on apps nowadays. And you can get a personal trainer on an app. Yeah. No. Rather than have somebody in your house like pushing your lower yeah, back, if yeah. you're gonna learn a language, yeah. you can do like do it on your phone. Yeah, I agree. Right? <laughs> uh, well, and and uh, uh, Jake, uh, may I jump in real quick? Yeah, I guess so. In a lot of ways, Babbel is a personal trainer for your linguistics. How so? Uh, don't push it. Uh, all right, now listen. There's a special limited time deal for our listeners right now. Get fifty percent off one time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription. Do you hear what I just said to you? But only for our listeners. You think you're gonna get this anywhere else? You're out of your mind. Okay, go to babble.com slash HTH. Get 50% off at babble.com slash HTH. Spelled B A B B E L dot com slash HTH. Spelled HTH. Rules and restrictions may apply. You don't have to say spelled HTH. I'm just letting people know how to spell HTH. Gilly, you're not sober. Okay, I'll tell you what. I've been kind of, my role's been watered down, but my bourbon hasn't been. <laughs> We have a whole different scenario, a different dynamic, because Drew was a surprise. So my parents did not know there was a second baby. Holy shit. And what? there was no ultrasound. So back then in Canada, yeah. when you only had an ultrasound if there was a complication. And so we, there was no complication. Our heartbeats were exactly in sync. Wow. Oh uh, my and God. so I was born and the doctor left. And then the nurse was like, clean up and everything. She's like, uh, doctor, I think there's another one. And mom, Drew was born to mom going, oh shit. And then Drew came out. Now my head was all like misformed yeah, yeah. and like uh -huh. everything. And so they were like, oh God, it's cause Drew was sitting on my head in the womb. So when we get bullying, today, womb bullying. Yeah. Well, I'll always be like, doesn't matter. Cause twins are competitive. I won the first competition. I was born first. And Drew's like, I had my ass yeah, on your face. I mushed your yeah. head. You had a butt shape. That's amazing. Yeah. That is crazy. What a shock for you. Oh, also, man. not doing ultrasounds, uh, that is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a newer newer technology. That's and, wild. Yeah. Now I you're spoiled. Say, now you're like, it's you? hand. I'm 44. 44. You're only a year younger than me. Yeah. yeah. But I. What were I'm you not... guessing? You were putting him as yeah, boyish. Go. You were going to say 30s. Well, it, I was I was thinking third like no probably beyond, he was going like fifty <laughs> no I was like well because you're like that's crazy I'm like really? oh my see my phones have only my been around for yeah, what yeah. ten years my nine stupidity years? ages me back to a lot of <laughs> yeah. people you are stupid I am dumb <laughs> yeah and so but that helps but, great but you're good looking yeah, yeah, thank yeah, yeah, you yeah, you're that's what I'm okay going for yeah really quick before we get rid of you just because you are marrying a friend of mine yes uh, what's going on with it where are you guys at. We, so we're engaged. I know that. Um, we we're trying to figure out the right place. Cause I, you know, but we both have the same thing where we, it can't just be like some random place. It has yeah, to be yeah, something yeah, yeah, that yeah. has a history or a meaning or a connection to us. So we've been having, you know, a challenging time figuring out what is right. And I also, I don't want it to be so complicated or expensive yeah. for people to get to. That makes um, sense. You already never come out anyway. I mean, I'm hard. So I'll we come to this. If you I will, you, the, you'll come to I that. Will come okay. To this. All right. You're not invited. But. I figured, <laughs> yeah. but I'll. I'm very but, available. But so you guys, you're I got a location. Planning it. Yeah, we're trying to plan it. The barn. Figure out when we want to do it. Also, you know, maybe it's because we're, you know, a little bit older. Yeah. We're, you know, lazy. But we want it to just be easy. We want yeah, it to yeah, be warm. Fine. I love that. And we want it to be a hell of a good party. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I will say is, somebody who knows Zoe well, 
uh, and I've gotten to know you better. I'm glad it's you. No, thank you. You're a fucking good human on the good team. And knowing Zoe, when we, you did that show, we were so close and we like battled through everything for so many yeah. years. We all became like cousins. Yeah. <laughs> so like seeing how everybody ends and like what's happening, uh, she landed well and um, uh, it's fun to watch. Well, I appreciate that. Is yeah. it a guest list thing because you don't have any room for other people? Or is that... Because <laughs> uh, there's a vibe. <laughs> What's the... Not... You went like this between us. Well, all yeah, of us. It feels friends. like... I mean, can you picture us at your... I think all of us at a table. Well, That'd be a good... I'm great say, at weddings. Jake could bring you as his date, but I really like his wife. I'm bringing so... my wife for I love sure. his wife. You bring I, me, I'll bring Aaron. I'll bring your wife. I'm not... <laughs> Gareth never stops talking. I'm going to bring him to a wedding. Oh, come on. I'm great. I'm <laughs> great this for is, This is how the wedding will go. You'll in the middle of your vows in the background. You'll hear. And also, and another thing. I knew. Shoot, I knew I shoot, should have done. Shoot or shoot. And I never shoot, stopped shooting. Shoot, shoot or shoot. It's but, a great. You know, I think the funny thing is we've talked about this too because like, so many people are so stressed about who do we invite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone's got to say. I'm like, we've both been married before. I don't care what anybody else totally thinks. Agree. We will. We'll do what we want. And one of the rules is. Everyone invited has to be someone we both know and spend time with. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to keep it simple. So I love it, man. Yeah, that must be because you did it. Bef you've been married before. That must kind of take a little bit of the the pressure off in a way because you feel like now this is for you a little bit more. Oh yeah, because even when you're you're dating somebody when you're younger, you don't know what you want. You don't even know yeah. what love is yeah. and. We were literally having this conversation with our eight-year-old yesterday. That's She's cool. like, you know, she was trying to explain to us that a crush isn't love. It's just a crush. I'm like, yes, this is true. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Where but, were you? You know, then yeah. when you're a little bit older, you know the stuff you want. Most importantly, you know the stuff you don't want right. in a partner. And uh, I have to say I'm the luckiest dude alive because we we just gel like you yeah. wouldn't believe. That's and awesome, so, man. Yeah. So. Well, I'm not, we're going to stop wasting your time. Thank you for coming. You're the best, buddy. This was okay. not a waste of time. Yeah. Okay, good. Was, we helped. Not people. only was this great, this was the best laugh I've had. <laughs> and in a come long back. Time. We saved and lives. We saved it's lives, lives, guys. Yeah. Just remember that. Yeah, I would. And if you are really searching for a location, I mean, we did just find out about a pretty cool barn in Central New York. There's no chance yeah. he's always going to Central New York, some weird guy's barn. Unless there's a zip line. Yeah, <laughs> which there is. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of this quality content. Ring, ring. Here to help, go ahead. Oh my god. Cut. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>